everyone. Welcome to today's edition of One Single Story. It is Wednesday. We're in Habakkuk chapter 3, and the first couple of verses there says, This prayer was sung by the prophet Habakkuk. I have heard all about you, Lord. I am filled with awe by your amazing works. In this time of our deep need, help us again as you did in years gone by. So I want to ask a, a question. That, so this word all here in other translations is translated fear. Um, by the time you're listening to this podcast, we'll be very close to uh, introducing to our congregation a book that we're going to read together uh, this fall called The All of God. And it's about being filled with the fear of God. We recently went through it as a staff. We, as a matter of fact, we just finished it up this week of the recording. But um, the question that I have, because I, I be honest, this the book has given me a lots of pause to think about. Um, but here it says, "I am filled with awe, or filled with fear." That, that that literally is the word fear um, by your amazing works. What does it mean to be filled with the fear or the awe of God? Well, just knowing how far above us he is. The well it's, it, some of the some of the fear people talk about usually leans into like reverence and stuff like that, but we also need to be aware of what God's capable of as well. And it's always great. You want to be in good relationship with him, but you also want to remember what he's capable of. And I think that kind of fear right there is, is a healthy form of fear like that we would have with, um, like with a highway. Your kids playing out near the highway. They need to understand what can happen out there. Or when I was uh, preaching a couple weeks back and I was talking about electricity, you know, you have to have a, a healthy fear of uh, electricity to, you know, to respect it so you don't get hurt. Yeah, so wide range. I think some people have a conception that the fear of God is, is mean, you, you walk around cowardly and wait for him to strike or to judge you and punish you. And and I do think there there should be an aspect that comes into there that you understand that God is sovereign. He he makes the rules. He calls the shots. Whatever that looks like for you, but this sense of wonder and amazement at who He is as Creator, and as you said, He's so far beyond us, His thoughts and His ways mm -hmm. that we can't really even comprehend. And when the more time you you meditate on who he is based on what we know of Scripture and his characteristics. We just become overwhelmed with who this, mm -hmm. this uh, God is, I think is a part of it. Now, you referenced the book. He has a, a point in there that he makes over and over again that the fear, the awe of God uh, will cause us to be fearful of being away from him, his presence. We become so dependent and want to be in his presence that part of that healthy fear of God is the, the fear of being detached and away from him. And so the more we understand who he is, the more wonder and respect and the more we are overwhelmed by who he is, we're just naturally drawn closer to him. Yeah, I think there are typically two extreme camps the, the i'm afraid mm -hmm. and then there's the um the other camp that don't like the word fear yeah that you know they they prefer the word all and 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 i you can't diminish that but they make him you know it's this oh, wow isn't that cool it's kind of like watching a star wars movie you know and it's mm -hmm. almost magical to him mm -hmm. um There's a dose of both. Like, I, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I said recently in a sermon, you know, he, he, he said he would bring the people back and he would pay the other people back. And I would rather be on the coming back side than the paying back side, you know, mm -hmm. because in the end, God is going to crush humanity. Yeah. Mm -hmm that does not turn mm. to him. In the end, he's going to. And you can't 
you, you can't just say, well, well yeah, he's, he, you know, he, he, he's just a magical dude. You know, you can't, you can't think about it that way. You got to have some of both. And for me, and maybe this is a good way to, to prepare you guys for the reading of that book. And I would encourage you. So we're going to make them available in the church. We'll, we'll be buying them from the local Christian bookstore. Of course, if you use Kindle or whatever, or audio books. I mean, it's a it's a very simple book. Use about four and a half pages a day, maybe roughly. That's what you can expect. Yeah. It's not overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, it's meant to go for six weeks. Um, but the breadth of what it means to fear God. How many scriptures there are that talk about the fear of God? Mm -hmm. How many scriptures there are that that emphasize different meanings of the fear of God and the things that it brings to you? into your life, for your children, for your finances, for your vision, you know, for your holiness, you know, um, and, and how you desire to live. And, it, you know, the, the, I, one of the things I think the fear of the Lord does is it is you don't, you're not obedient because you're afraid of what might happen, you're obedient because you desperately want that relationship mm -hmm. and the closeness, you know. Um, and as I've as I've gotten older and understand, you know, I don't. There are things I see two kinds of in. I see this in marriage. I see two kinds of marriage. I see people who do things to avoid conflict, and I see. Other people do the same kind of things because they love the person mm -hmm. enough and they want to improve the relationship. Mm -hmm. The motives are completely different. Mm -hmm. The outcome, in my opinion, is completely different, you know, um, because if your goal is just to avoid conflict, there is going there are going to be times. And I see this where you're going to do things that would be unhealthy just to just to reduce the conflict. Yeah. And if, but if you're doing things out of love because you you desire for the relationship to be strong, um, then that changes everything. And I, I I think that the same is true in our relationship with God. Um, that healthy fear of Him that is um, an incredible. It's life changing. Mm -hmm. Like I, I genuinely believe. Well, as a staff, recently, this is my favorite book we've done in a while. Um, I can think back to a few that I, I really liked, but like this is my favorite book in in a while, um, just because it challenged me, challenged me to rethink even things about like how I pray. You know, um, how I verbalize certain things, you know, my expectation going into things, um, the impact of how my relationship is with God on how on my children and my spouse and where I lead, you know, all of those things. And so um, this this is going to turn into a, a small advertisement. Um, but. I hope you participate. I mean, you you guys are going to participate as well, right? Yeah. And so both campuses will have those books that mm -hmm. accessed, and so our small groups will be doing it, mm -hmm. which is Chris's purveyance. But you don't have to. I will say you don't have to be in a small group to to participate. You can get the book, read along. Um, we're going to evaluate the messages to see what we can incorporate. You know that in the in the messages to 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 emphasize uh, that, but I think learning what, and it's not just having it, because here this is, this is, he uses the word field. There's difference between mm. having it and being filled with yeah. it. Yeah. It's a huge difference. Yeah. Any ob other observations about the fear of God that you guys wanted to make or the awe of God, ever how you want to describe it? I don't. Only that later in, in this um chapter he, he goes on and he, he uses terminology he says even though we don't have figs and grapes and 
Uh, if our cattle die, he said, yet I will praise the Lord. I will be joyful in God because he came to the understanding that the fear and the awe of God is all about the relationship. It, it's not about the dividends. It's not about the things we get out of it, but it's first things first. And the, I don't think you can get that place without awe and respect and fear of God. Well, thank you guys for joining us today on this edition of One Single Story. We hope you'll be back tomorrow as we continue our conversation around the book of Habakkuk.